All right, so it's a Twisted History podcast, Twisted History of, I don't know what you want to call this, Twisted History of... Bangers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do bangers. What, 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 how do I send this one out? Twisted History, I, I don't know what the hell You just is. did Wishless. Twisted, okay, Twisted sw- Wishless, Twisted Smasher Pass, Twisted Smashless. You'll get to it. We've been doing some snake dress at the end of each... Um, episode this one we're going to do twisted uh history snake draft of historical figures that are dead that we would have banged when they're in their prime whatever you say their prime is a couple of caveats with that i'll mention it when we get towards the end of the podcast i'll start out with a letter because i normally do this one's from scott weber at large here's something you might find interesting we all know about brown versus the board of ed yes we do uh, it held in 1954 that segregating schools by race was unconstitutional. He's absolutely right. Brown versus Board of Ed basically overruled 1896's Plessy versus Ferguson. Plessy versus Ferguson, you'll remember it was separate but equal. So you were able to divide up people based on their race and whatever, as long as you gave them equal facilities to wherever you divided them up to. That's what Plessy versus Ferguson was. And Brown versus the Board of Education said, fuck that. You got to give people an equal right to, um, well, first of all, a lot of facilities that they were giving these people were certainly separate, but weren't equal. So um, Brown versus Board of Ed is something that desegregated public schools, let everyone go to the same school at one time. But Scott goes on, he says, but there's a far less known Brown versus Board of Education Part 2. The sequel. The sequel, yeah. Brown versus Board of Education Part 2. And this happens quite a bit. Any kind of landmark Supreme Court case sometimes has Part 2s, Part 3s. So Part 2 is essentially, you know, it echoed what happened in Brown 1, but it needed to supplement the decision the following year holding that desegregation should occur with quote-unquote All deliberate speed. So this is what Scott wrote in. Essentially, the South was told to desegregate and basically giggled to themselves because they didn't have a strict timeline. The all deliberate speed ruling comes down the following year, which pissed everyone off. Segregationists used the vagueness to intentionally delay desegregation because that phraseology didn't exist in the legal field. There was a reasonable person standard that's often used, but deliberate speed was not. So kind of a fun Supreme Court fact, this was essentially an addendum to arguably the most significant case in Supreme Court history I'm not sure many know about. So now you do. Now you know that when people bring up, and we just got through celebrating Juneteenth. Yesterday, we're we're taping this on a Tuesday. I hope everyone had a great Juneteenth and a great Father's Day. Um, So is this Juneteenth? Because it's June 20th? (laughs) Yeah, we're taping this on (laughs) Juneteenth. Yeah. You call her Christineth. Um, so anyway, so in, uh, in the shadow of Juneteenth, what's that from? What's that from? That's from, uh, the other, other guys? guys. Yeah. You get yeah. back here and have uh, sex with my wife. Yeah. Arnie yeah. Palmy alert. Arnie, yeah. Arnie Palmy's. <laughs> Arnie Palmy's. The way she grips his hair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I want to do a snake draft of sneaky hot girls from like movies and stuff like girls who show up. They're never on the cover of Maxim. They're never of anything, but whenever they show up, they're always cut a, uh, impressive swath. You know what I mean? I think that girl, uh, I mean, her name might be Zia or something. She was the girlfriend of Justified. Justified. Yeah. Yeah. Not Mm. the most beautiful girl in the world. Certainly not. Certainly beautiful enough to catch Raylan because I think Raylan's very, very handsome. Would. Um, But wherever she shows up, she does a a good job. She's she's on that TV show with uh, the guy who was obsessed with the the writer. Hmm. He was a serial killer. Remember? I don't know. You were you watched Castle. <laughs> no, no, no. House. It was I'll think of it. House. <laughs> yeah. So that guy lives down the block from us, one of the other doctors. What? Oh, really? From you know, there's the British guy, oh, Hugh Laurie. Oh, yeah, and yeah. then there's Robert Sean Leonard, who's the other doctor. Right. Yeah. He lives down the block from us. And my son's like done like odd jobs around his house, like from like, you know, Joe's odd jobs. And they have all like these secret passages throughout their house. It's pretty cool. That's you got, all right. You gotta you don't lead people on though. You said the guy from House lives down. Yeah, the I said one yeah, of the doctors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said the, one the of the. Do- the I believe cane. I said one of the doctors from no, House. You, you really buried the lead there. You buried yeah. Sold yeah. me on lead. it. Yeah, you threw a oh. lot of sizzle with a fucking disappointing stick. Did it work? Did I catch your yeah, attention? You I mean, this, you got me back Mission with the secret passages. Yeah, Call her I was Christine. like, whoa, wait, got a cool house. <laughs> yeah. So on Juneth, we're we're in the shadow of Juneteenth and Brown versus the Board of Education Part One. Set the law. In 1954, right? No more separate but equal. We're going to desegregate. And then Brown versus Education uh, Part 2 set the timing in 1955. And there were other addendums to Brown versus Board of Education for people to look into it because 
even setting the law and setting the timing was not enough. And I'll fast forward 20 years to Runyon versus McCrary in 1976. That was very similar to Brown versus Board of Education, except it barred segregation in private schools, whereas Brown only applied to public schools. So, um, so yeah, so just a little uh, civil rights moment here on uh, Twisted History. Um, Thane Cameron, what a name, Thane Cameron. What kind of a name is that? Like, who? Know, what what like does a, that guy do? It's like a Star Wars. Character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, yeah, yeah. Like a, Cad Bane, Thane Cam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a disgraced Jedi. Yeah. That was caught <laughs> with uh, inappropriate pictures on his laptop <laughs> of, of like young Jedi oh. showering. Ooh. Yeah, and and that's why I shouldn't say Epstein Skywalker. <laughs> yeah. Epstein uh, Sky- Thane Cameron <laughs> sent this one in. Whenever I hear of somebody send me a new torture uh, thing, I automatically think of Vips. I don't know why. I enjoy talking about torture with you, Vips. Yeah, yeah it's so, fun. Yeah. So there's something called it. He sent this from somewhere on the internet, um, Pure Collapse. So shout out to them. Bamboo torture was a historical torture method where a restrained victim would be made to sit on a bamboo sapling. Due to the fast growth, excuse me. Due to Don't the fast me with a good time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> due to the fast growth of bamboo, the sapling could cause severe injuries, including the tearing of the anus Oof. and potentially penetrating further into the victim's body. For reference, as to how fast bamboo grows, some species can grow up to one and a half inches an hour. Remind you of anything, Annie? Yeah. <laughs> And as much as 2.9 feet a day. So some bamboo grows up to three feet a day. That was from Pure Collab. I don't. I couldn't find anything where people were strapped to where they're sitting on it. Yeah. Right? Because I'm going through that. And it seems a little bit too specific. But it winds up that this is a real torture. And I like it. It started in India, but the technique was more famously employed by the Japanese during World War II or prisoners of war. And we, we know how Japanese treated uh, prisoner of war uh, people, prisoners of war during World War II. We've gone over this in great detail, how they had no respect for them because they themselves uh, refused to surrender. So if they were prisoners, if they became prisoners of war, it, it, in essence, their lives were forfeit. So they did whatever the hell they wanted with prisoners of war POWs. So what they would do, it almost looked like um, a bed frame. That had that was open on the bottom, and they would tie down a soldier horizontally, so laying down on his back, facing upward, over growing bamboo shoots that they sharpen the tips of. So the sharpened shoots would then start growing and impale into the back of a person. And I've seen pictures. Have you seen this? Mm-mm. This is the first time for me. It's wild. Yeah. So, so slowly and very painfully, it would start piercing through the body until it finally came out the other side. Like, think about it. If it grows three feet a day, right, and with a sharp and just like guiding it in, let's say it retards that growth just a little bit, within a couple of days, they would have bamboo shoots growing through their bodies. It's fucking wild. That's it's like, a, yeah. It's like some Last of Us shit, like, uh, the, you know, the, yeah. the, the fungus that eats people. Yeah. Um, yeah, it has that feeling. It's very Ev- deliberate. So eventually there'd be multiple shoots coming out of different parts of the body. Death would be inevitable, but slow. Again, like, I try to check all this stuff. Um, multiple shoulder, uh, soldiers confirmed that they found corpses strapped down with bamboo shoots growing through them uh, in and around World War II in the Pacific Theater. And then the Mythbuster guys, who I love, checked to see if it was even possible with one of those ballistic gelatin dummies. Yep. Yeah. They use that on um, Forged and Fire a lot. The one Chinese guy. Do you know Forged and Fire? A little bit, yeah. No. This blade will cut. My dad is, is that where they build? They craft cute. weapons. Yeah, they say, "Hey, listen, here's a hubcap. Everyone has a hubcap on their anvil. I want you to make that into a uh, 12 inch tanto knife. Go." And then they have to melt it down in their forges, pound it out in big blue the hammer thing, and they make it into these perfect knives. And then afterwards, they have to test it. And there's a sharpness test. Uh, I don't know some other test where some uh, Chinese guy. Says, uh, your blade will kill. He's so That's what friendly. He says. Yeah. Your blade will cut. Yeah, your blade will cut, your blade will kill. So those ballistic happy. dummies, they pump them with dye. I think the Mythbusters guys do also. So when they cut into them, it squirts, so you know. They always use a pig carcass. Yeah, deadliest weapon where they show, they try to compare. Oh, that's what you and Clem were going to try and go on. 
No, no. What Clem and I that? were going to try and do the thing with the armor where we fought people um, like LARPing. LARPing, almost. yeah. Imagine yeah. him and yeah. Clem in sand it's, it's trying like a to fight. Chi- I feel like a chicken sandwich. So by the way, so this is the first Twisted History I've ever recorded in a t-shirt. So I don't wear t-shirts that often. Thanks, sweetie. Um, it is a fucking inferno in this place. It's a fucking inferno in this place. I, I alluded to it last week and I complained about Twisted History no longer being able to survive in podcast form. They can't even afford to put fucking AC in this place, much less keep one of the greatest fucking podcasts to ever be created. I'm a little bit angry about the whole fucking thing and especially angry because I just saw my fucking spirit animal. Somebody find some air conditioning in this piece of shit office. Well, I, I think it's because the AC guy just comes here and hangs out. Like he yeah. doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't do his job. He just comes and chills and yeah. gets on stool seats. Would you like me to fan dude. you with one of those yeah. giant leaves behind do, you? Do fucking something. Uh, multiple soldiers saw this happening. Mythbusters said that it could happen. So it happened. I appreciate, uh, even though I made him out to be a pedophile Jedi, uh, Thane Cameron for sending <laughs> that shit in. Apologies. Sorry, Thane. Large is taking no prisoners. Uh, Imagine arguing with him. Come yeah. on, Thane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you win against yeah. that? It must be in Thane. <laughs> um, so a couple of people wrote in, uh, actually a lot of people wrote in upset <clears throat> about the podcast yeah. winding down. I appreciate all that. I do. I appreciate uh, everything. People had asked me, are there any other podcasts kind of like this? that they can listen to. The short answer is no. I think a lot of history podcasts sort of take themselves too seriously. A guy had sent something in to me, his name was Scary Jerry, and he sent me Dark Side of the Nerd. Scary Jerry, I believe, is one of the hosts of Dark Side of the Nerd. He had said, uh, all due respect, I started saying that I'm taking left turns when I get off script and whatnot. Uh, I think he's a big fan of this podcast. I haven't listened to it yet, but perhaps he has a, a, a similar sensibility if you want to give that uh, a try. I know macrodosing is probably the closest thing here. There's not a lot of intelligent um, barstool <laughs> podcasts. Oh, oh, I, I yeah. thought you were going to say there's not a lot of intelligent conversation on macrodosing. No, like, no. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love macrodosing. Yeah, I love going yeah. on it, to be no, honest you're, with you. You're, uh, you're like a, yeah. a spare tire. Really. I am. They, they pop yes. you on when, they, when you got to go in there. <laughs> yes, exactly. I like, <laughs> I like that analogy. A, yeah, more of a I, It was picture. kind of degrading, yeah, yeah. but I kind of think I No, he looked that. right at my... I wasn't trying one. to be degrading. He looked right at my midsection. He's yeah. like, kind of another spare tire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. fucking belly button. Um... <laughs> But otherwise, I don't know, right? I mean, because and I don't mean that they're less intelligent podcasts, but they're ones that are a little bit even more irreverent than this. So, um, but they have nothing to do with history. So I don't recommend any <laughs> outside of macrodosing, perhaps, where Billy will just piss you off with some of his fucking takes. Uh, but that's it. Dark side of the nerd, maybe, maybe not. Um, there's a guy named Mason who had asked me to look into the move bombing with no other info. Mm-hmm. Like normally, when people send me something like, "Hey, look into the move bombing." I'll be like, oh, can you give me something on it? Yeah, like, what, is, just, what is move bombing? Like, get me, get me hooked a little bit. And otherwise, I just keep going, right? Because we yes. get so many of them. But for some reason, since move was capitalized, it's an acronym that means nothing. It's not an acronym, actually. It's just a name, but it's capitalized. M-O-V-E, movement. Like, you know, whatever. But M-O-V-E doesn't mean anything. So I looked it up to see what it meant, and that's how I went down this rabbit hole. And I'm glad that I did. So the shout out to Mason uh, for doing the minimal amount of work <laughs> <laughs> for recommending something um, because I kind of like this story. Um, I w- you know, if John was here, I wonder if John knew about this. 1985, the move bombing is the day that Philadelphia bombed its own people. Has no, anyone ever heard of this? No. 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 What it a scumbag here, Philly line. Yeah. yeah, that's a perfect. <laughs> Nobody knows about this. And perhaps people from Philly are listening and going, no, I know about it. I know about it. Was I'm John born then? 85? No. No. No, right? absolutely not. No. So, but I don't, <laughs> you know about Waco. We know about Ruby yeah. Ridge. We know about mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. And I think that this here fits neatly in between Waco and Ruby Ridge. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows about those. Yeah. Every intelligent person knows about those. By the way, I'm getting down on unintelligent people today. And I don't fucking give a shit. Right, they're, well, they're you just prove it. you're just proving the point as to why Twisted History needs to keep going. Yeah. But they're, I hear you. Cannon fodder. In May 13th, 1985, there was a bombing and subsequent fire of an entire residential block in the Cobbs Creek neighborhood of Philly <clears throat> by the Philadelphia Police Department during a standoff with the MOVE organization, M-O-V-E. Who the fuck are MOVE? MOVE was originally called the Christian Movement for Life. It was one of these communal organizations that advocated for nature's law and natural living. It was founded in 1972 by a gent named Johnny Africa. Oh, 
That's sweet. <laughs> that's a great. It's actually John Africa, but I gotta <laughs> call him Johnny Africa, right? I mean, so that's... now <clears throat> during roll call, he's Africa John. Sure. Right. Like yeah. that's that's kind of a cool nickname. They all have. change their last names once you become part of the Move organization. You change your last name to Africa. <laughs> I'd be Mikey Africa. I I'd be any go, Africa. Any Africa. <laughs> that's a good one. Africa Annie, if it was roll Jackie call. Jackie Africa. Yeah. Jack. I don't, so would you go Jack Africa? You could have to go Jackie Africa. Oh wait, I don't know. Jack Africa sounds very nice. Jaffa. Yeah. Are you really a John? No, I hate that question too. Let me get this out real quick. I hate Johns. I hate Johns that steal Easy, the Jack name and then Whoa. force me to go through. Are you a John all the time? No, I'm my fucking name. So are you that, a Jackson? That's why. John no, left. I'm Jack. I, Jack. I'm the name I tell people. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Jack Angry. <laughs> Jeff. Africa. How do you really feel? Yeah, that? no, it's always <laughs> pissed me off. So that sets him off. We got to figure out what sets you off. Right, everything else. So anyway, so John Africa does it. It was made up of mostly African American people who wore dreadlocks, advocated a radical form of green politics. Their political views <laughs> have been called a strange view fusion of black power and flower power. So these were essentially black hippies, mm -hmm. right? But they were a little bit more militant. They I got you were themselves say stylish. In, they got themselves into a little bit of they trouble. Had, they had a little bit more rhythm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and by the way, huge dicks. So, um, in 1981, the move, <laughs> the move, move relocated to some row houses in Cobb's Creek. Whenever I think of row houses or just this story in general, I think of Amsterdam, New Amsterdam yeah. from The Wire, when they kind oh. of had that thing and they said, yeah. you know, like it was all row houses because, mm -hmm. you know, you'll see why that I, I feel that four. way. Yeah. Um, that was Bunny that did that, right? Yeah. Neighbors complained to the city for years about trash around their building. This was 1981 when they moved into these row houses. Uh, they had confrontation with neighbors, uh, bullhorn announcements, and po obscene political messages that were being screamed by MOVE members at all hours of the day. So people hated the fact that they had moved in. <laughs> the police obtained arrest warrants in 1985, charging four of the MOVE occupants with crimes including parole violations, contempt of court, illegal possession of firearms, and making terrorist threats. The mayor at the time, Mayor Wilson Good, and police commissioner Gregor Sambor <laughs> classified MOVE as a terrorist organization. So that's when the shit hit the fan in 85. They evacuated, they evacuated residents of the area from the neighborhood prior to their action, and residents were told that they would be able to return to their homes after a 24-hour period. This is starting to sound like a Waco, <clears throat> right? Like where they're sort of surrounding the compound. Yep. <clears throat> Unfortunately, this compound is in row houses. So they start to evacuate the row houses around the move people who will not move. Okay? If the, if, if Go ahead. This is very in Please. the weeds. If the cops come to your house and say, hey, you got to evacuate, do you have to leave? You know what? I, I would I say no. I probably would because I'm a rule follower. He wouldn't. He'd be like... You'd be I mean, I got almost... a brisket going. I can't leave my brisket. <laughs> yeah, that's I... my large impression. <laughs> that's impression. Me. <laughs> the truth is coming out. How I got we too all many feel condiments about each in other. the refrigerator. I'm not <laughs> right. going. No yeah. way. Uh, Look I mean, at like, the spare tire. Would you like a sandwich first? It's kind of like the reverse <laughs> of COVID, though, because it's like, could they really keep you inside your own house? You know what I mean? Like, right. It's the opposite of that. This isn't the China is, where they're sealing you in, yeah. blow torching you in. If you were if you were in that neighborhood, yeah, let's play devil's advocate and say you're in the neighborhood and these people were universally hated in the neighborhood and people and the cops were like, We're gonna take care of it, get the fuck out of Dodge for twenty four hours. You'd be like, Oh, you're taking care of it? Yeah, I'll do whatever you say. But you're right, there yeah. are, there inevitably is somebody who goes, No, I'm not. Because I'd be leader. like, Where do I go? Like, like old yeah. people. I'm gonna go yeah. sit at Starbucks for how many movies can old I see? Old people yeah. are like my medicine, you know, like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> they should have left, though, because on May 13th, 1985, police dropped two explosive devices from a police helicopter onto the roof of the house that was occupied by MOVE. That's nuts. <laughs> that's very Waco-ish. Yeah. Like, Waco, the they went in when they weren't supposed I mean, yeah, to, so that sounds a little bit... Of, a the Philadelphia <laughs> Fire Department allowed the resulting fire to burn out of control, destroying 61 previously evacuated neighboring homes over two city blocks, leaving over 250 people homeless. I Yikes. I so feel like you had to have gotten out of Dodge. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you skipped some steps, though, like the police did. Like It's like, hey, you want to no, just no, drop some yeah. explosive this, devices? Well, most people say, it? or else, if I don't leave, then what? But this well, is, we'll hold on a sec. This is, this is my point. When you read about the move, uh, the move incident of 1985, that's what they tell you. They tell you a little bit about move, then they tell you that the police dropped two explosive devices, and then the carnage that ensued. 
61 previously evacuated neighboring homes burnt down, over two city blocks, 250 people homeless. Six adults and five children were killed in the attack, with only one adult and one child surviving. That's the move people. Mm -hmm. They're the only people that were casualties. And there were 11 of them, including five children. That sounds awful. Like, that that does sound awful. It sounds exactly like Waco, like you were saying. Yeah. 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 But listen to what led up to that bombing. That morning, 500 police arrived in force, right, and attempted to clear the building and execute these arrest warrants that they had drawn up. Again, this was now deemed a terrorist organization. I'm not taking sides here. I'm just telling you guys what had happened. So there was an armed standoff where police then threw tear gas canisters at the building. The MOVE members then fired at them. I believe they fired first, right? And a gunfight with semi-automatic and automatic firearms from both sides ensued for 90 minutes. That's a long gunfight. <laughs> that's a, and that's a why if you didn't leave, right? If you didn't leave your house, you're regretting not leaving. Because now there's a 90-minute gunfight going on outside your fucking door, and there's a helicopter overhead with two makeshift bombs in it, but you, right? But you got a hell of a brisket sandwich while it's <laughs> yeah, all going exactly. on. Yeah, and I'm you know someone's shouting, turn I'm the TV it, down. Yeah, I'm spraying it down with some fucking apple cider vinegar. I get it. Um, apple juice, rather. Uh, so 90 minutes, pew, 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 okay? One officer was hit in the back, was not seriously hurt. He was wearing a jacket. Police used more than 10,000 rounds of ammunition. So 10,000 bullets were thrown until the commissioner said, you know what? Enough. Bomb the compound. So that's what led up to it. I still think that it was a little bit much, but it just didn't happen. Like, we didn't show up, evacuate, and bomb it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's like a scene from Fallujah. You know what I mean? I yeah. Really, yeah. It's like Black Hawk Down. <laughs> City, right? <clears throat> yeah. The Miracle Mile. Um, so a Pennsylvania State Police helicopter, a guy named Lieutenant Frank Powell, just the name, Frank Powell from Philly, doesn't seem like a bomb technician. Perhaps he was. He dropped two one-and-a-half-pound bombs made of Tovex, which is a dynamite substitute, and the FBI had given him some C4. So they threw in Tovex oh, yeah, this on. and C4, yeah, man, in and they dropped these two one-and-a-half bombs. Like I'd like to think it was almost like one of those old Indiana Jones biplanes where they dropped the bomb out of it, but it was a helicopter. They dropped these two bombs right on the roof, and... Um, the explosion ignited some gasoline that was on the roof that was being used for a generator, and it set the house on fire immediately. So it was very, very effective. Now, why didn't the firefighters put it out right away? So the firefighters wanted this thing to burn enough so the cops could shoot tear gas then into the actual house. So they did let it burn for about a half hour. But after about a half hour, the firefighters then wanted to put out the you know the ensuing damage, the collateral damage, and then there was more gunfire. They started shooting at the firefighters. That kind of explains it, too. Yeah. So the firefighters backed off. They were ordered to back Don't off. Don't save us. What are yeah. you, crazy? And the fire spreaded unabated uh, to the neighboring houses on the block. That's a little bit more of a detail of what happened. By the way, this is Philly, 1985. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're yeah. all East Coast guys. I go to Philly yeah. all the time. I know. I know. I don't know about this. I'm a history guy, right? I wonder if John Shame knows about you. it. I don't Where think is he, he does. Get him in here. <laughs> um, God bless you. The fire killed 11 people, as I had said. Six adults, five children. It's crazy when you think about that only 11 from yeah. that particular. Well, like no, everyone else more. was gone. No, so, I know, but you would think 11 doesn't, for something so insane. Like you 90 think, minutes of shooting. Yeah. No, there was there was 13 people left, and they killed 11 of them. That's that's a good number. This good is who ratio. they killed, by, by the way. They killed Johnny Africa. They killed Rhonda Africa. They got Teresa Africa. They got Frankie Africa, Conrad Africa, Tree Africa, Delicia Africa, Netta Africa, Little Phil Africa. I wonder what he looked like. Little Phil. Yeah. Tommaso Africa and Raymond Africa. Rest in power. There were only two survivors, Ramona Africa and 13-year-old Birdie Africa. That's wild. I love the fact that one's name is out. I don't know why I get I'd this. like to know where Birdie is right now. Yeah. And as I said above, in the process, it destroyed 61 neighboring homes, leaving over 250 people homeless. So if this happens in this day and age where the cops burn down a row house in Philadelphia or any city in any state of the union, I don't know what you oh guys think the ensuing damage would be, <clears throat> but this is what had happened to the city of Philadelphia. This is what they had to pay. They were ordered to pay $1.5 million, with an M wow. in 1996, 11 years later, to a move bombing survivor and the families of people killed. That's $1.5 million. 
And then they had to do another $12.8 million to the residents who were made homeless. And that didn't happen until 20 years later in 1985. So after 30 years, after bombing their own people essentially <clears throat> and lighting a city block or two city blocks on fire, it cost Philadelphia $15 million. I get wow. that for dropping a coffee on my lap. So that's the move thing. Uh, you know, and I'm not sure how this has flew, flown, fl- flown under the radar for such a long time. But like I said, would you agree? Ruby Ridge didn't have as many deaths as Waco. Waco had a shitload of deaths, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, on both sides of the ball, but they had a shitload of deaths. Ruby Ridge didn't have many. I think this is firmly in the middle in the MOVE organization bombing of 1985 when Philadelphia bombed itself, uh, shows up in between Ruby Ridge and, uh, and Waco, right? Holy shit, it's hot in here. It's Can I give you an update on Birdie? <sighs> yeah, please. Birdie, I'm feeling pretty good. When he was 42, <laughs> when he was 42, he drowned on a cruise ship in a, cru- in a cruise ship hot tub. Wow. Oh, what a yeah. way to go. That's he was what they highly intoxicated they and he slid under. That's, that's it. Yeah. Take, some, take some pills, start boozing a little bit, yeah. and just yeah. pass out in the hot tub. Oh, man. So <laughs> JC said, allegedly, when Birdie had died in a hot tub, this is another alleged who was sentenced to me by Jesse McDade. Laps, uh, large, absolutely heartbroken to hear about Twisted. Jesse McDade and sounds like a cowboy. I'm just Jesse McDade that. does yeah. sound like a cowboy. That old, the the old McDade brothers. <laughs> yeah, the McDade brothers. Yeah. Yeah. It's like who Django killed when he first got to that. Like he looked for the McDade brothers. They changed their name, but he found them and killed them. Yeah, he did. I'm making a lot of fucking um, left suppositions. Now they're getting to see what our house is like. (laughs) Before the end, you absolutely have to mention Babe Ruth killing his wife. Allegedly, he puts in. So uh, who picked Babe? You picked. I picked Babe Ruth. Yeah. The babe was a known... Did you know he killed his wife? I did not. I wouldn't yeah, have invited yeah. him to dinner if I knew he <laughs> killed his wife. Yeah, he didn't kill what his What have you been wife. up to? Yeah. The babe was a known philanderer, and after getting another woman, Claire, pregnant, he asked his wife, Helen, for a divorce so he could marry Claire. Helen said the only way she'd nice. agree is if he was to pay her $100,000. He declined, and shortly thereafter, Helen died in a house fire. It was found that she was asleep at the time of the fire, hopped up on sleeping pills. Okay, so that's so. If you do Google Babe Ruth killed his wife, this floats around. This isn't true. I, you know, like I'm I'm gonna let certain things go in this episode because of the people that I hate that I'm talking about. But Babe Ruth, at the time of her death, Helen and Babe were separated. Can she I just w- put this out there? Maybe if Helen didn't sleep so much, Babe wouldn't have looked for it elsewhere. Yeah, also, she, uh, she was living with a, with a dentist. She was already living with another dude. And it. so it was, they were separated, not divorced. Uh, quick math, uh, the 100K today is about like 1.5 mil. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. Good yeah. money. Well, one point, yeah, that's cool. So, so, she did, so she did die. She did die in a house fire. And it wound up that, you know, there was all this speculation that she was given some sort of opiate. She wasn't. They pulled up her body. And, and who would have that. opiates? A dentist. <laughs> yes. Or Babe Ruth. So no, the idea was that instead of paying her, you know, this Whoa. this big sum of money, Babe Ruth had her killed. And it's just not true. I wish it was because I love shit like that. Uh, there was faulty wiring in her house. The house was exquisite, except someone put in some new wiring. Who hired the electrician. Yeah, who was, that was years before. <laughs> so it wasn't one of those things that... Uh, so long that con. was one of it. Yeah, the long con. So you're but, saying um, he did he planned it. Yeah, so I would say that I and all the stuff that we speak about, I try to find out whether or not it's true. Like I did find some poor bastard who had bamboo growing through his body. Uh Babe Ruth didn't kill his wife. So so put that where you but want I'm back to. On the list. Still coming to dinner. All right, yes, good, he's still, good, he's good. Still back on the list. Uh let's talk about Hitler. Um and we're going to talk about stuff that maybe people don't know about him. So please stop me if you've heard this one before, <laughs> but his mother died of breast cancer when he was 18. Do we know that? We know he was an artist, right? Yep, Everyone knows he sure. was he was turned down from art school twice. Uh we know his favorite movie was Django. King Kong, oh. right? So like <laughs> right. we know certain things about Hitler. Uh we know that he originally had the longer mustache, a handlebar thing, then with the gas mask in World War One, he went to the, the little paintbrush type, you know, uh mustache, which now doesn't get used for some reason, even though I find it quite fashionable. It's so versatile. I can't yeah. Do German. So I'm gonna oh. say a couple of things and maybe you'll know some of them, maybe you won't. But when his mom died, she died of breast cancer, uh it, it wrecked him. It uh damn near killed him. Yeah, he was, a, um, he was like a mama's boy, right? He very much was. So yeah, I think some some of this is known, some of this is not. 
But as a personal consequence, he went on, um, he would go on to develop this huge fear of getting cancer, right? So he believed that eating meat, drinking alcohol, and smoking were all major contributors, which was kind of revolutionary. Was, yeah, was Hitler way ahead of the time? Yeah, yeah. so he was right. This is, this is, a, this is Hitler a pro did Hitler. have some good ideas. <laughs> yeah, this is a pro Hitler podcast. <laughs> Great paintings, right? So he rarely drank. And as Chancellor of Germany, he led one of the largest anti smoking campaigns of the time and encouraged all those around him to quit. All right. So Hitler wasn't a smoker, wasn't a drinker, wasn't much fun. One of the reasons why we didn't put him on last week's list of coming to dinner. Okay, so you have that with a bit of a buzzkill. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. And it's a little bit hypocritical because the Nazis actually produced their own brand of cigarette, uh, cigarettes called Sturm, you know, uh, translated to Storm. So Storm cigarettes in the early 1930s. They were sold with collectible sets of images of historical German military uniforms. That's cool, yeah. right? I mean, that if you were, uh, you know, a, a Hitler youth, and you got one with, you know, uh, oh, a Luftwaffe rookie or something like that. I think, I think you would be kind of cool. Oh, and on Blitzkrieg t- card. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll trade you two. You know, anyway. So what I think would happen is oh, that oh, an Einstein's group in. <laughs> yeah. Let's just keep going. <laughs> but what they would do is that they would find stores that didn't sell Sturm cigarettes. They sold whatever competitors. They would shut those stores down. Um, they would often pay like kids and soldiers with cigarettes. So even though Hitler was against smoking, the Nazis were still behind a pretty big brand of cigarettes called the Storm Cigarettes. All right. Hitler also became a vegetarian, particularly later in life. He loved his liver dumplings and his sausages. But after a while, he did become a strict uh, vegetarian, again, for health purposes. So it leads to a logical fallacy used in arguments called reductio ad Hitlerum, which sounds like a, um, a fucking Harry Potter spell. Harry Potter. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Reductio ad Ed Hitlerum. It's something that's used a lot. So it's it's a Latin term describing an association fallacy, which asserts that the qualities of one thing are inherent qualities of another, right? So a lot of times people will find out that Hitler was a vegetarian. Um, JC is also a vegetarian. Therefore, JC is as bad as Hitler. Makes people sense. People make those all the time. People do Sorry. that all the time about politicians in general comparing them to Hitler, right? So you've heard also like guilty by association. You knew the guy who killed somebody, so therefore you were in on it. These are all like sort of hypotheses and fallacies that happen. But one of them is called reductio ad Hitlerum, right? And it seems like silliness, but it's everywhere in political discourse nowadays, which is why I bring this up. So much so that an American attorney and author named Mike Godwin coined something called Godwin's Law, which asserts that as online discussions grow longer, regardless of topic or scope, right, the probability of comparison to Nazis or Adolf Hitler approaches 100%. I see that all the time. Yeah, for sure. There is intelligent discourse, particularly in the political arena, that starts. And then as it breaks down, inevitably, which is approaching 100%, when I say inevitably, Somebody compares somebody to being a Nazi or to being well, Hitler. Well, Pete Buttigieg is Hitler, so yeah. let's all just admit it. This, this is, <laughs> actually could be very fun. Like next election, let's like do a time, like a timer countdown until they bring up Hitler in, right. in debates or something. So it takes a while before God. <laughs> yeah, like walked in jo- like we were masturbating. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Joey Canasta just barged in thinking that this was his room to use. And all he saw were like three sweaty men <laughs> and one breeder. And he was turned on and, and all that kind of stuff. You're in the right place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Men's medium. Um, so that's, I think that's more impressive than reductio ad Hitlerum. There's also reductio ad uh, Stalinum for like comparing stuff to Stalin. Like there's all these type of reductios. Do you think there's going to be a Trump one? Reductio a Trumpus or yeah. something like that. That sounds kind of cool too. But uh, you know, uh, you know, that's a perfect example because anything that involves uh, anyone who supports Trump, inevitably, again, hundred percent does get compared to a Nazi at some mm-hmm. point, right? I'm going to go on because there's another one called Poe's Law, which is an adage of internet culture saying that without a clear indicator of the author's intent, any parody or sarcastic expression or extreme views 
can be taken by some readers for a sincere expression of those views. So that's Poe's law. I'm going to break that down a little bit. You cannot decipher anymore whether a person is being sincere or insincere well, online. Like, kind of like when I just said Hitler did have some good ideas. Exactly. So that's taken out of context Goodbye. with any kind of idea whether or not. And you could have deadpanned it more. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, like so with Hitler me hating Nick ideas. Tarani. Like just saying a couple of times that I hated Nick Tarani in a couple of pieces of content back to back. I can't tell you how many people have asked me what did Nick do. And I always tell them that he did something um, unseemly with my sister. So now people think that that's true because they just don't get the joke. So that's why I take such a nihilistic approach to everything I see. As I get older, I feel like nothing matters anymore. And everything is a joke. And that's where our society is going. That's what Hell I'm yeah. trying to tell you. Like nothing oh. fucking, like honestly, life is a rope stretched across the fucking void. That's it. That that's that's all there is to this thing. It's um, you know, birth, pain, death. <laughs> I don't Taxes. know. Why I'm so fucking big. So the last thing we're gonna mention. So now you know about God. So you know about um, reductio ad Hitlerum. You know about Godwin's law saying that Hitler's gonna show up in 100 percent of the arguments. You know about Poe's law. How people can no longer decide what's sincere and insincere, particularly on the internet, but beyond. Right. Then there's also something that's let's give equal time to people who support Hitler, and that's the Goebbels gap. The Goebbels gap. So Joseph Goebbels was the chief Nazi propagandist. We spoke about him ad nauseum on this podcast. He was a bad, bad man. So the Goebbels gap is an internet adage defined as the amount of time, listen to this now, everyone at home, the amount of time between a negative event, right? Yep. And the time it takes someone to blame it on the Jews. Right? So 1985 move bombing. It takes about 10 days before somebody says, I bet a Jew said throw the bomb out. You know, like that's something called the Goebbels gap. I first heard about this around 9 11 because it took about 10 days before somebody said, I think Israel was involved. So that's a real fucking thing. I don't know what it has to do with a history podcast, but it's something that exists the Goebbels gap. Now let's talk about that thigh gap, ladies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thigh gaps. I'm going to take a sip of water. Because... Wage gap? What about that thigh gap? Mm. Let's worry about that. Don't get him started on the <laughs> one behind your knee. Oh, yeah, the the uh, pigeonhole. Did we talk about yeah, yeah. fucking or something <laughs> last yeah, yeah. podcast? Uh, yes. Back to Hitler. This is something people don't know. Do you know who his first love was? His niece, Angela uh, Maria uh, Raubel. And she was known as uh, Jelly. So Angela Maria Raubel. And Raubel spell, uh, pronounced a bunch of different ways. I don't really care. But Jelly, Gelly, and Gelly, Jelly, Jelly Rabble. She was 19 years younger than him and lived with him between her ages of 17 and 23. 17 year old girl living with her 19 year old, a 19 years older uncle, Adolf Hitler. There's nothing to like about him ever. Yeah. No, it's not that you're, yeah. not, that, you know, not that you're trying to, I'm trying to find a yeah. silver lining, but yeah. every yeah. aspect of the man is just Awful. Yeah. This was all happened before World War II. And after this woman had died, Hitler declared that Rabel was the only woman he had ever loved. Zero redeeming qualities, yeah. this man. At ever. some point. He's honest. So there's all these stories about how he used to um, have sex with his niece. Ugh. Right. And they had a relationship, but they weren't officially a couple. You know, sometimes you're banging your uncle. Yeah. So at some Been point, there. while she's living with Hitler you know, between the ages of 17 and 23, she falls in love with Hitler's chauffeur. And she tells Uncle Adolf. And he goes crazy. Fires the chauffeur, doesn't have him killed. And then that does makes not him allow- crazy? Sounds like he was crazy long yeah. before that. And did not allow Gelly to associate with friends and attempted to have himself or someone he trusted near her at all times. So Rabel was now living in a prisoner in Hitler's Munich apartment where he maintained strict control over her actions. Hitler and Rabel argued on September 18th, 1931, when he refused to allow her to go to Vienna. He then departed for a meeting in Nuremberg, but was recalled to Munich that next day with the news that Rabel was dead from a gunshot wound to the lung. Okay? So he fights with her on September 18th, conveniently leaves town the next day, and then gets the call that she had shot herself in the lung. Even though it was an awkward way to kill one's 
oneself. She'd apparently shot herself in Hitler's Munich apartment, in his apartment, with Hitler's Walther pistol, and she did it in her own chest. It's tough to do. And then after she did it, she placed the pistol back on the side table before dying. She was also found with a broken nose, which was explained away by saying she must have fell forward after shooting herself. After shooting herself, replacing the pistol, falling forward, and breaking Placing her own it nose. on the right. table, yeah. The gunshot wound was inconsistent with self-infliction, but no autopsy was performed. Several theories, including speculation that Hitler intentionally or accidentally shot and killed Rabel during an argument and then left for Munich, or that she was killed on his orders. Hitler had a lot of people killed back in the day. They're thinking it might have been the niece that he was in love with, who was in love with his chauffeur. According to William Stewart Houston, Hitler's nephew, when I visited Berlin in 1931, my family was in trouble. Everyone knew that Hitler and she had been long been intimate and that she had been expecting a child, a fact that oh. enraged Hitler. So again, maybe she was pregnant, maybe she was not. They didn't do an autopsy. So I don't like to spread lies here, right? I wouldn't put up with any kind of besmirching of Babe Ruth, but I am going to spread this one. I don't know if it's true, and we're never going to know if it's true. But Hitler's first love was his niece, and Hitler had killed his niece, okay? And he has a micro penis, and he has one ball. All righty? gassy. Yeah, and that's it. Right. Um, we're going to go into the snake draft. Does anybody need to take a break or anything before that? Okay. Lights are so this snake draft that we're doing um, this week, we're going to do uh, historical figures that we would, in a vacuum, wouldn't mind having sex with. Gun to your head, you had to pick them. I'm saying this because I'm a married guy with my wife in the room, and I'm sure my wife vice versa feels the same way. <laughs> we don't want to have sex with anybody except each other, Annie and I. But if we had to, and we had to pick five people from history, four that are the opposite sex, and the final one is the same sex. We're doing that because it's Gay Pride Month still? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Juneteenth, we had the Brown versus Board of Education. And on Juneteenth, we're going to talk about having sex with dudes. Yeah. All righty? So it's going to be... Um, they have to be dead. And you can pick them in any time that you want to have sex with them. You don't have to do it. You know what I mean? Like maybe you'd even... <laughs> right now, dig them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Blow that that last day in the hospital, right? And then afterwards, you pull the plug. You leave a 20 on the fucking bedstand. Um, so that's it. So normally, Annie starts off, but I didn't think that would be fair because she's not going to have the run-in that we're going to have because the three dudes, dudes, um, we have to pick broads until the very end, and she's going to have to pick four guys and one girl. So therefore, to switch up the lineup, I was going to have Jack go first, and then Vibs, me, and then Annie will play, uh, you know, clean up. Is that cool? Yeah. So do you we'll want to go this way then? It's up, it's so up it to you guys. it ends on Annie? Yeah. And then can swing back. How do you want to do it? The other way will confuse me. The in order will be good. If we jump around, I'll yeah. get it. I'll go out of line. So what? Do you, so you want to do it this way? Yeah, just run. All right. So the way that the room is set up, we're going to go start with Jack Coleman, and we're going to go counterclockwise. So to me, then to Jeff, and then to, to the Saint. So Jack, who's been playing cleanup, batting cleanup for the past couple of, of uh, snake drafts, is now going to um, is going to go first. I just got something from Jeff D. Lowe. I saw that, and it's very it was concerning. Okay, all right. In a, not a bad, but it was just like it's, it was, so it's it was something official. like I'm trying to get eight inches. I'm like I don't know. What the yes. Fuck it is. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, so I think it's a private text between me and Vibs and Jeff, but it, I apparently thought it was Jeff's a, asked me for eight inches. I thought it was a spam account being like, hey, I'm looking yeah. to fuck. You got eight like, to spare. Yeah. yeah. So, yo. <laughs> Number one pick, picking my dude off the board, <laughs> Jeff D. <Lowe>. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so is everyone cool with this? So this is going to be a dead historical figure um, who is the opposite sex until the last person. They got to be same sex. And you got to wait till the end to pick your same sex partner. But uh, uh, that's who we're doing it. All right. So with the first pick in the draft, uh, Jack Coleman is going to pick. Yeah, uh, you said I'm, I was batting cleanup, and I think I'm going to go and hit a home run right here with her ties to baseball. There's one yeah. of one. You yeah. got to go Marilyn Monroe, top of the order. Jack, is it amazing? Was it was she your number one? I, I Marilyn Monroe is probably my one. She's top three for sure. But I was thinking Cleopatra historically. Right. I mean, don't give away because you still had a pick. I'll steal to oh, clear back. Well, I'm just yeah, saying, yeah. she's got a million movies about her. Right. Marilyn just has one that apparently sucked. It, it's, she's the most iconic, I would say. But 
But what did she do in history? She just sucked off the president. Like Cleopatra oh, yeah, conquered that's a land. Big deal. She's that got is, so she's collected much. That's that, a big that deal. presidential seat. Monica yeah. Lewinsky's known forever in history because yeah. of that yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what though, like as far as <laughs> Is she in a history book? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Fuck. That's all that matters. But, but in high, actually that matters. in a high school history book are they like and then the president had an affair with an intern. I'm like, sure they are now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they do it now. Right? I, I feel yeah. like whenever I was in school, we never got to. I don't even know if Clinton was in our textbooks because it was. Well, so, nowadays it's an aspiring career to have. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I'll tell you what. Let's put it. Well, well, you know, this is a moving target, I guess. But it's something that we've mentioned on the podcast multiple times too. Mm-hmm. Like with, I'm fascinating with Joe DiMaggio's, you know, uh, relationship with her. Yeah. Now I can finally see Marilyn was his last words. Um, I think happy birthday, Mr. President. Big I mean, time. That, that alone Absolutely. makes it historical. I guess she, she has, if you watch t- television like now or at least like 20 years ago, mm-hmm. you'd have so many like references. Even like cartoons we'd watch, they'd have like Marilyn Monroe references. Big time. Like, yep. Absolutely. And yeah, she's, she's she's iconic. Everyone recognizes but she's, her. But at the end of the day, like if you look at her in a vacuum, would kids nowadays call her mid compared to other like smoke shows i'm just talking from a physical standpoint no. i think she was worlds away hotter than the other people at the time okay you know what i mean so it's like i don't know maybe a couple years down the line we're looking at kim kardashian like this and this right. lens where she's just banging all the famous celebrities of the time but yeah. you think that kim kardashian will ever have the gravitas that because i'm saying that as i'm researching this topic or the mm-hmm. snake draft she shows up at the top of the list almost every time marilyn she, monroe does she died in her 30s right. she had a layer of peach fuzz on her face yep. that it caused the light to bounce off that's why she always seems like she was glowing in pictures she had some cosmetic surgery which by the way didn't happen back then mm-hmm. she was you know the first I mean? woman yeah. to be known as a jogger like yeah, she would go jogging. out like the people don't realize but she like that was what she did that was the only exercise i think she she's did n- she's number one with a bullet yeah and I'm not sure why. She was like this I, she drug was addled. stunning. I mean, yeah. sexual revolution as well. I, I think she was one of those leading forefront women that finally kind of, you know, right. put it out there and it wasn't necessarily frowned upon. It was, she embraced her sexuality yeah. big time. Yeah. I would have took her if you didn't. Yeah. And I think it just I saying that also. it's top three. You know, I think anybody would have taken her in the top one or Plus two. Plus, I think yeah. I think one, one, yeah. two. one two. Madonna, one, two. when she did her Material Girl, she Fuck brought Madonna. her back. Oh yeah. And I think a lot of people were like, you know, who is this? They don't know who she's trying yeah. to um, imitate. And then when they saw it, like I think she brought her back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that she just keeps getting. Kim K just wore her the, dress somewhere. I think to like. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the Met Ball. I don't know where she got it out of the archives. I don't know if she, she got bought trouble. it. She got auction. slammed for it, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, because yeah, she, she got re- dragged yeah, for it. She returned yeah, it just it. covered in cum. She stretched- <laughs> yeah. No, that was uh, Clinton. <laughs> yeah. Um, Imagine but- having a move named after you. Like everybody knows what a Lewinsky is now. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Um, so snake draft, snake draft, Jack Marilyn. Um, I'm yeah. going to go with my first uh, pick. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Eve. No, ah, girl. that was one of mine too. As in Adam and yeah. Adam and Eve. She fucked everybody in the world. Yeah, and so I got to get a piece Ooh, of that. Good you one. know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah so, a little forbidden you know, fruit. Yeah, and people can then say, "Hey, did she ever exist? Is that truly a historical figure?" You can argue it. Did I you mean, see I think my list can, in the car. I no, I can. You can argue I all you want. Today. Um, you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think having Eve up, and especially on a graphic. You know, like that cartoon of her holding with the thing with the, with the fucking rack out. Uh-huh. Um, I'm taking Eve uh, with my first pick, which leads me to uh, my good friend Jeff Ibert. Who do you got? Hmm. Now I got the graphic in my head. <laughs> right? I could take Cleopatra. It's a safe pick, but yeah. I don't, I'm not here to be safe. <laughs> Large, you want a you want a woman that that fucked everyone in the world. I want a woman that's fucked no one. Okay. I want someone who's pure. I want. The Virgin Mary. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Give me that clean book. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Your kids are going to be born with antlers. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, t- I'll take yeah. the Virgin Mary. <laughs> he can't call bullshit on that if you, you know, and then that opens it up, right, for the discussion whether or not <laughs> religious figures a- actually existed and, and whatnot, but. I'm going with it, right? I'm a Catholic. Mm-hmm. I'll yep, take Virgin yep. Mary. I think Mary I don't existed like it. more than Eve, though. <laughs> yeah, no. You're absolutely right, <laughs> yeah. right? But, I mean, if you're going to talk about a historical figure, people mention Eve all the time. Yeah. And Adam and Eve is iconic. Remember mm-hmm. remember the episode where we talked about uh, saving a population? Yep. 
it wouldn't take two people or a hundred to take like yes, five thousand. Yep, yep. That was a fun episode. I've yeah. Never, I've we were talking about how bad. cheetahs were dying down. Yeah. And then we were talking about how how long, what, how many it would take to repopulate uh, something that was going uh, extinct. Let me ask you something before we go any further, because I went as old as possible. Don't get older than Eve. I went on the mm-hmm. old scale. I also have had the oldest people before in these drafts. Ooh, who won last draft? Me. Oh, I don't know if that's I true. I don't know. I think it's I a know toss I up between didn't, us two. But it was not. It was. I don't know. I was about to say. I got say. Jesus in the second round. Yeah, but he's kind of a buzzkill. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. He's about to bang his mom. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, well, I'll go back to the whole thing. I think I won the last one. We'll go back to the whole thing. When you um, think about this, like thinking about Eve and thinking about Mary Magdalene, keep in mind. Even if you get them in their prime, not so much uh, Marilyn Monroe, you got to realize they're going to have that hair diaper. Like, they didn't trim down there at all. <laughs> so, fucking Virgin Mary's hip to hip. Not on my watch. Okay, good luck. <laughs> We're waxing. Uh, all right, Annie, you're up with a dude. My dude is Jesus. I mean, Jesus. he made women. So Come on. I mean, Jesus. he knows what to go for. So he the... made all of our parts I... move. Uh, uh, now look. it's now there's three religious things on the board. And I'm I just don't... saying, I, I mean, come on. If you thought I wasn't going Jesus, I mean, okay. he knows what makes us tick. He just okay. whispers the body of Christ. He's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's right. got a rocking fucking body. Yeah. Uh, he knows exactly what to do. Yeah, I'm sure. I hear you. I mean. Water into wine. Right? Multiplies loaves and fishes. He had a temper, though. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> right. That's okay. You're a tax I'm collector just saying, the, temple. Yeah. the guy knows fuck. why he made a woman a woman. And okay. I think he knows how to use his no, no, I get junk you. as well. I share a birthday I mean, with him. Okay. Absolutely. Work on water and walk on water, right? Soak them panties. All right, Jack, you're up with your second one. Uh... Oh, I don't have Wait, to go no, backwards? Oh, no, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, Swing I apologize. Yeah. yeah. What's that called when you just... Is that a non-snake? Um, no, it's not. It's something else. Yeah, I can't think of it either. It was snake. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, I'm a little bit uh, flustered. Annie, so you want to bang Jesus and then your second person. Obviously, gun to your head, too. You don't have fantasies about this, but we're making you... Uh, pick these people. Who's your second person? I've called him a stud in the past. You know it. I'm going Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt. Big stick. Yeah. That's good. That's right. Man. I think there's nothing more we can say about Teddy Roosevelt, right? He's a man's man. Yeah. 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 Right? And a total departure. Oh, yeah. Like, if you look at the man that you married versus the man that you want to bang, like, you couldn't find more of a dichotomy between me and Teddy Roosevelt. Me and Jesus have our parallels. Teddy Roosevelt and I are on the opposite side of the spectrum. No way. You think so? Oh, okay. I, I bet Teddy think Roosevelt I, could I think you're cook a, a brisket. stud, too. You think? Okay. Wow. Well, I right. got good taste. Just need to throw that in there, apparently. Then. Well, no. I, <laughs> you, you, I saw a picture of you sitting out at your, your outside bar smoking a cigar. You looked you look just like Teddy Roosevelt. Maybe if you need to feel confident, I will make Thank you feel you. confident. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, you're up with your number two uh, historical oh, girl. Okay. All right. I'm just going to... Um, how many do I one, two, three? <laughs> I don't know if Cleopatra was banging. I, I googled what she looked like. Yeah, but I don't. They just really, really don't know. Also, I think she might have been kind of young. Hmm. No. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna say I'll take Cleopatra. I, I think Cleopatra is the obvious choice. Yeah. Really? Like, I don't know why. I, you're I would like to know why. She's like the definition of beauty. There's like is movie. She? They made like 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 yeah. epic movies By the about directors, her. Directors, but. But like, if like, you ever like, is like, she your type? Do you have a type? She's like African. Oh yeah. <laughs> like they, she was. They wrapped her up in a rug and smuggled her in. That's how she banged Julius Caesar. I think. Right? Wasn't that the thing? Yeah. Mark the, Anthony killed himself over. Her. She's. Yeah, I think she's, she's in Caesar. She's in. Cleopatra. Right, but she's that's just, if you. I'm just saying. Like, is that is she? Like, if you were, if you were walk, like I look at Teddy Roosevelt, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's similarities. Clearly. No, but you you are but, in a different boat than us, Annie, because you can choose multiple dudes knowing that we only have to come up with one we're trying to rob girls before somebody else takes them right mm-hmm. to win yeah. this draft i think first and foremost yeah so whether or not i let's say vibs like no i don't get down with uh black chicks which would be something for him to say on his fucking <laughs> <laughs> last on, podcast on, all right on juniath well, oh, no i would shit. think like i went not for the a last type. podcast we got so we got two more podcasts One's original stuff that we're taping here next week, and the one's going to be a best. Like I'm stuff. assuming your other girls are going to be similar to Marilyn. I can't imagine. We'll see. I don't think like, so. I don't. We'll know, nobody compares to Eve because no one really I'll knows say, what she looks I'm like. I'm going to tell you right now. So, so Jeff just went Virgin Mary, and Virgin Mary, he went to Cleopatra. 
That is a very similar. That is that's a, that's a, a pretty cool looking um, rubric. But they're this, but from the from the similar backgrounds, right? Okay. They have similar appearance. Well, my first pick, my first pick was Eve. Nobody knows what she looks like. My though. second pick is Three Tru Trun. G2 Chin, remember her? Yeah, the, the it, Vietnamese woman with like nine tits. Is that real? The nine tits part? Did I make that up? No, she didn't have nine tits. She was the Vietnamese Joan of Arc, right? Okay. <laughs> she predated Joan of Arc by 1,200 years. But at 20 years old, Lady Tu raised an army of a 1,000 strong to rebel against the Chinese forces that sought to conquer her homeland of Vietnam. This is back in the third century. Mm-hmm. And the reason we're so crazy about her Right mm-hmm. on the battlefield, she carried two swords. I right. love somebody who fights with two swords. She rode into the battle wearing a bright yellow and red robe on the back of a war elephant. Right, she had a voice that sounded as loud as a temple <laughs> bell. <laughs> she was nine feet tall, yeah, with breasts that were three feet long. So you have to that put she real. tied behind her back. This girl is real. This girl is absolutely real. She tied behind her back during battle. So she's a nine foot tall Vietnamese sloppy, girl with man. the biggest, <laughs> sloppiest fucking <laughs> Vietnamese hams you've ever seen. I always said, don't tie them around the back. Put them around like a Brian Bosworth neck roll. Just put them on your yeah. head two, when you have a headache. Imagine three <laughs> Gets feet. Gets on a plane. Like just, they look like shaved <laughs> dachshunds just <laughs> fucking <laughs> falling down. Three feet. Yeah, tree, true, trun, or whatever. I'll send you how you spell it. It's actually pronounced. Stay back, Ju ladies. Chin. Oh my. Ju T Chin. <laughs> Lady Ju. So uh, she's a Vietnamese folk hero. She was a real general. Whether or not she was nine feet tall and whether or not she had three foot breasts, it's true. <laughs> it's 100% true. So I'm taking her, and I think she'll look good in, in a rubric also. So I don't even know how to spell this. Three uh, true trin. Uh, now I'm intimidated. Lady Ju. Here I didn't think I could, you know, I was pretty confident, and now yep. how am I going to compete with that? Never. Can't I mean, did any that. of us have her on our list? No. So bad pick. I did have Eve. Eve was one of mine. Yeah. So now I got to go. But he could have t- taken her second to last. I couldn't mm-hmm. wait to take her. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. 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 All <laughs> right. I don't know if we've met. All right, uh, JC. Who do you have? Who are you back now? Swing. And one large is good. Yes, is, absolutely. Is so now we're going to JC. All right. Uh, similar to Vibs' logic with Cleopatra. I'm gonna go for another woman who was fought over. May I, may I say it? Oh, say it. No, don't, don't. The, the face don't that launched it. a thousand ships. I believe so. It is. She was on my list too. Helen of Troy. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. She's Easy she's dumb. she's. You hear good, large yeah. over there, <laughs> scratching her off his list. Yeah. No, she's a good one. Yeah, she I is mean, a good one. You know, got to see what all the fuss was about. I feel like that's like a little brother move. Can I open your Christmas presents? But for what you? if she just lays <laughs> it? Like, what if she was just good to look at? And then nah. she was just like boring. You know, I don't like... think a war gets started just because you're hot. <laughs> yeah. She did something she's, with her tongue. Yeah, she's, she's right. you, you, she started the Trojan War. You've yeah. never been to yeah. last call at the gym on yeah. <laughs> Thursday. Yeah. No, she whipped out a Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah, She was the wife of King Menelaus of Sparta, was abducted uh, by Prince Paris of Troy, which sparked the Trojan War. Yeah. She was the face that launched a thousand ships starting the Trojan War. So uh, yeah, 100%. I think Helena Troy... That's is a good uh, one. is is a good one. If you I, have to do another one though. You have to go yeah. back to back right now. Um, what are you saying, Jeff? I'm if sorry. I took Cleopatra, if I took Helena Troy before Cleopatra, would that have been a better move? Because I was I thinking would have taken Cleopatra. If okay. It got to me. Yeah. So yeah. That was either one there. You just got to drop by need there. Yeah. <laughs> I should. I could have took need Helena. A tight end right yeah. now. I could have took Helena <laughs> Troy. I didn't know if she would be on the board, and it's stupid to think so. But I'm so excited about this gigantic Vietnamese girl. That I'm trying to figure out whether I have regrets. I have no regrets with that. No, you uh, shouldn't. Go ahead. Would you like us to leave you alone? No, no. Good. Okay, just go ahead. <laughs> uh, and then this one is more in the vein of Marilyn, but I'm going to go Princess Diana. Ah, uh, oh, yeah. Good one. She's hot. She's fun. This, She's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this morning when I was doing my shower, I was like, man, yeah, I'll Princess try. Di Princess would be Di. a good one on the list. <laughs> Not too soon, I feel like. You can... I hate Princess Die. I don't know why. I just, I hate everybody that's involved with the royal family. And um, she didn't want to be. She totally best. disconnected she was, herself she from She didn't want to be. Fucking Charles um, came to date her sister. She stole Charles from her sister. She's a, she's a first rate whore. She was Honestly, God, one hundred for. I mean, for the list. Attaboy, oh, she's great. Thing. No, no, at one hundred percent. I got, I got zero problems with her as a, uh, as a pick on this list, but uh, wouldn't. Princess die. That's if, how if I If there feel. was Maybe any royalty, an I guess I did Cleopatra. <laughs> right. That was one where I just British look at royalty. her picture. I think she's hot. Easy. Yeah, yeah. Do you think so though? 
Do you think that she is? Relatively on this list, yeah. Yeah? In like a, oh, I went to the Hamptons this weekend and I ran into this girl and she was a little granola-y, but. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I only have two more girls left. This, this, uh, don't look at my shit. <laughs> you got? I'm wondering who looks good too. Like when you're thinking about a historical woman that you want to put there and people will be able to see her and know her. So I'm going to save, man, I have a couple of good ones. I'm hoping they all go. I'm going to, I'm going to take Joan of Arc though. Okay. Yeah. I'll take her. Right. Really? God, God chose her. her to lead France to victory, long running war with well, England. Well, French she girl. Was, yeah. Did yeah. she even play for your team? She was, she was tied like to a stake burnt as a witch at the age of 19. By the time she was canonized, she was considered one of history's greatest martyrs. Patron saint of France, long blonde hair, and she looked great in fucking armor. I'm taking Joan of Arc. Just grafted, drafted like the Greta Thornburg of 1300. Yeah, I don't know. Yes. If I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not your. It's not your um, no. uh, pick. Go ahead, Jeff. What do you got? Yeah, you were just saying you're hoping like it translates well and people will understand it. Yeah, I, I, I kind of want to throw this pick out now because I'm excited. <laughs> do it. Do a little excited. Oh. I'm gonna go with the throat goat, Nancy Reagan. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> that that might have that might have just won you the fucking yeah. draft. Yeah. That might have just won you the draft. Oh, oh, oh. So instead of putting a picture yeah. of Nancy, you want me just to put a picture of the goat? Yeah. So, no. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, goat? yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or just yeah. a fried egg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say no to drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Say yes to loads. <laughs> um, all right, Annie, you're up with your third and fourth dude. Shirt coming. My soon. third oh, and no. f- yeah, your third and fourth. My third and fourth. Yeah. Okay. Yep. My, for my third, I'm going Ragnar Lothbrok. Okay, yeah, the guy from the Viking. uh, Vikings. He's yeah. a Viking. Uh, he's, he's, he yeah. had all the sons, Abba and Bjorn yeah. and all of them. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, no, my God, I bet he was hot. There's an inherent sexuality to that, Oh, my. Too. And I, I, you know, like, he wasn't the first to, you know, conquer, yeah. take over England, but he was the first man to leave people behind. Like, he didn't just conquer and, and move on. He right. actually laid roots there, which I think is pretty impressive. Right. Um, his last words were how... How the little piggies will grunt when they hear how the old boar suffered when he was thrown to the stake pit. So I think it's kind of oh, okay. st- like studly, right. pretty masculine. And uh, I, know, I think he was just good looking. And again, that, that show Vikings on the History Channel does a great job, I mean, of 100% just, just you up taking like the Viking. historical uh, <laughs> records and throwing it out the window for the sake of entertainment. <laughs> but you'll, you'll definitely be familiar Uchred. with this stuff. Son Uchred, of Uchred. Son of Uchred. That's a different one, too. But... Um, yeah, all all Vikings are always like sexy. I even think that dude from the big redhead guy from Lord of the uh, from fucking Game of Thrones. Yeah, that dude. What's his name? Oh, the the, um, like the wanted to bang um, halfling Brielle of ha- yeah. Brielle of Tarth. Tarth. Yeah, what the hell was that guy's name? I don't know. I've I watch it every a, day because yeah. I'm watching I've him. I've seen I don't him know. in a couple of things, and he's he yeah. like, you know, he's always kind of got that thing. All right, so you're out. Uh, you're now Jesus, Teddy Roosevelt, Ragnar Lothbrok, and then what's your fourth? <laughs> My fourth. The <laughs> reason why list. I picked this guy was because he was. Yeah. I thought he just thought he was good looking, and I think it's very. I think people who are extremely intelligent, yeah, are very sexy. So I went with Herman Rorschach. Oh, from the Rorschach test. Yeah, he's known in history <laughs> as one of the best looking psychiatrists in history really? he's yeah he's very good looking really yeah and he's brilliant he looking was absolutely stomach, brilliant what do you see <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh shit i just left the he left one on the small of your back right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. darkness what? yeah I see, I see my father being eaten by a german <laughs> shepherd oh i gotta get out of here that's how he knew whether he should say I, he'd drop a load on a piece listen, of felt i didn't agree what with joan of arc but i certainly didn't Dump on her. No, I'm, I'm saying that he'd be dumping on, on you. Me? And then, yeah, yeah I want her. <laughs> All right, so Jeff, you're up with your fourth He's good woman. looking. I, I agree. I'm going to Google him up. Hmm. He was brilliant. I have, I, I have options here. Yeah, you have many options. <laughs> oh. Mine's going to be the best looking. I, yeah. You know, Ann just said you got to go with someone who's, who's intelligent. I want someone who's also in good shape, an athlete. Uh, I'm gonna go Sally Ride. Sally Ride, oh, astronaut. Oh, Rod, oh, Sally yeah, yeah. And, then, yeah, yeah. And, then, and then when we're fucking, just be like, yeah, ride Sally, yeah. And it's a good tell, one. Tell all my boys I rode Sally. Did she have like a hair helmet? Yes, right. Yes, she she sort of did have this. Almost like a she chin was awesome. Strap. Yeah. She, yeah, she was. She, she was incredible. She looked like a like a PE teacher, a fifth yeah. grade PE teacher. Yeah. <laughs> 
She'd be like, I was pulling five G's. She'd be like, <laughs> yeah. You're pulling one V tonight. <laughs> Jeff V. Um, all right, so that's <laughs> that's your fourth salary. Right. This is this, by the way, is a preposterous fucking thing that we're oh, doing right now. Yeah. Um <laughs> I'm gonna go with all the girls are off the board, so I can Time to get into the dude. <laughs> yeah. I want one that looks good in the thing. Oh, she's got to be dead. That's a that's a big thing. Jeff, I'm and JC and Ann. I might go with Betty Page. I think Betty Page is going to look good on a thing. Yeah, Betty Page is one of the earliest oh, playmates, yes. right? Okay. She's Miss January 1955. Look up Betty Page. She was known for uh, her sadomasochistic and fetish modeling, mm. huh. and she's considered the first bondage model. She's the girl that. Like started everyone having those fucking dark uh, bangs type thing. Yeah. Everybody like kind of loves like her now. She's got like a a Cat Van D type thing yeah, to her. Did it. they fashion Betty Boop after her? Yeah. Is that? Oh cool. no, or vice versa. Or vice versa. Yeah, yeah. So Betty Page was uh, more Born 1923 uh, else. in Nashville. Yeah, so I'm gonna take Betty Page. I like the cut of her jib. I like yeah, to bend her cool. over and read the shit out of her. I think she was tattooed. Uh, Jack, you're up with the fourth and final woman. Cool. Um... I'm going to take another first lady, and I'm going to go with Jackie Kennedy. Okay. Nice. Jackie nice. O. Classy. Might be very sterile. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Exactly. There you no go. Problem. No, she loved to throw it around. Right, Jackie O? Did they? Yeah, absolutely. I like it. Yeah. Was John, John's nickname Jack? John yes. Kennedy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jack Kennedy. Jack. Jack. Kennedy. Yeah. Oh, Jack and Jackie. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. And Jack and Jackie. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of... Nice pick. Oh, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> she's, on the, she's on the plane back to Washington, D.C. When I interviewed Maury Povich... Maury Povich was a beat writer in D.C., so he was chosen to go and cover it on the tarmac when they had flown back into Washington to Dulles. So it was Jackie O and then uh, LBJ, who was sworn in as president on the plane. On the plane, and Jackie was still in that pink outfit with her pillbox hat, mm-hmm. and the outfit was covered with brain matter and bone and blood. And then they uh, they said to her, "They're like, we have a, a change of clothes for you, uh, m- you know." Jackie uh, to change and she's like no no I want to wear this and I want them to see what they had done so she walked off the, the plane onto the tarmac in Dulles and everyone was fucking still stunned that she was covered with pieces of her husband so she was a ballsy bitch Jackie uh, I like that it, yeah, Emmett yeah. Till's mom did it first but alright cool <laughs> yeah exactly let's see what they did Just to my boy copying. yeah yeah um, alright so let's so that's some dick. Th- yeah, yeah yeah let's go yeah, boy. Yeah. Um, see the interesting here thing here though is I could go for the ultimate presidential threesome. Okay. And get Whoa. JFK. Mm-hmm. But. You can. You also might get a few diseases. I will say, I know. Also, John, F., John <laughs> F. Kennedy's body was, was weak and feeble and that's, gross. That's exactly he it. Was he was not an athlete. So, so I'm not. I'm, yeah, yeah. I don't he think was I'm so struck there. with diseases, right? Were, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Was, was he Addison's? They were shooting him up with right, well, drugs yeah, every day. Yeah. Which, yeah. Worse hey, than George Washington. George Washington was a fucking wreck. By the way, Addison's is also what killed Warshak at 37. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, go ahead and pick it if you want. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a no-brainer here. I mean, 10 pounds of cock. We got to go Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It yeah. could sing to you to yeah. make you calm. Oh, please. <laughs> I'll something. have it my way. <laughs> yeah. are, we all, are we all assuming that the, where these people that we're picking up are, are the bottoms? Or do you want to have Frank mount you? That's a personal question. Oh. Mm. That should be an easy answer. I know it, it should be. It should be. No, everyone, uh, everyone hears a power Either top. give her yeah. or take yeah, her. Yeah. I don't know. You could, you could mix it up for this. No. Nah. I'm not a selfish lover. I think we are both just taking turns. Yeah. Yes. It's fucking easy for and me. sucking. Yeah. <laughs> I like uh, to think we just eye fuck as he sings to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, be very romantic. With old blue eyes. Yeah. Take turns. Uh, uh, for dudes, I'm going to go with Lord Minimus. Uh, just because <laughs> <Lord Minimus. laughs> I, I love him so much. The dynamic, yeah. I do. you really I love do. Him so much. Great. Yeah, thirteen thousand dollars to buy his pants. <laughs> I love his fucking pants. And what's wonderful about this guy he was eighteen inches tall. Then he was abducted by North African pirates. Was kept in abduction for a long, number of years. When he came back, he was almost twice his height. I mean, like, you know, 36 inches tall. And he said it was because he was banged in the ass so much by his pirate captors. So imagine what I could do to him. So therefore, and I think that little, the, you know, he's a dwarf. So he was a dwarf that was given as a gift to a, uh, a queen. He jumped out of a pie wearing a full suit of armor. I don't know. What was the... Uh, Did he have a monkey too or something? Yeah, he yeah. had a monkey. <laughs> his monkey's name was... Bubbles. 
to, no, his pet monkey was Pug. <laughs> so, yeah, so his pet monkey was Pug. And uh, he was he was awesome. Um, he went to a duel, and he challenged some guy to a duel, and the guy thought he was kidding around, so the guy brought, like, a water gun, and he shot the guy in between that. And that's when he had gone on to the lamb, and then he had been taken by pirates, and then he got fucked to twice his size. So I'm going to take Lord <laughs> Minimus. I, I lost this uh, this uh, draft, by the way. Um, but I think he's going to look good on the, uh, his, on the li- his little pants. Did anyone else have Lord Minimus on their card Nobody roll? Had Lord no, Minimus. no one had he's Lady all True. Yours. Yeah, anyone have Lady True? No, no, no Lord Minimus. No. Anybody have yours. Betty Page? No, no? Uh, uh, Joan of Arc. Somebody had Joan of Arc. I no. thought about putting her on there, but again, she just. Again, I thought she, right. medieval times, big yes. bush, smelly. <laughs> yeah. She just smells like a, a surf. <laughs> right, I hear you. Okay. Jeff, you're going to pick a guy to bang from history. Who is it? Hmm. Well. Well. You could pick an actor from Hollywood that's been around and seen everything. Uh-huh. Are you going for the presidential threesome? <laughs> or you could pick a wild card bad boy that's an assassin. Or... Whoa. You could pick both with John Wilkes Booth. Oh, oh there you go. Killed the president Very and was a stud looking. actor. Very. And, he, he and I'm famous, fucking him. And he was good looking. Yeah, he yeah. was hot. Really good. He he's was like, hot. Yeah. He's like Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. the 80, 1860s. <laughs> Not recognizable, right? Like I you, disagree. You could, I think most kids would know. Because they, they always... No, they, I'd show you five pictures now of people you would know, all around that time, and i say, which one's John Wilkes Booth? And you wouldn't be able to know. I disagree. I think kids would right. know. Today, I, they would know. I think you know. need to have... I think that you need to have... There's yeah, like a comedy where, you know, John Wilkes Booth in sepia tone shoots Abraham Lincoln and he smiles first. Like, I think you would need to see that in the... Um, in the uh, whatever we make up the diagram, yeah, I think you know what you, I'm saying. If you just took random dudes with mustaches right. and hair, like you just see mustache, his clothes, and you go, yeah. "Oh, that's John Wilkes Booth." Yeah, and Andy, you're, you're going to close it off by one girl from history. She one has to girl be dead. from history. She I would have went Lewinsky. By the way, if she was dead, I would have taken Lewinsky in a heartbeat. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that was such a like a big deal, um, and I'm, I remember it so vividly. I think it was mm-hmm. such a big deal. And I probably would have taken. I Lewinsky. maybe would have went her over like Princess Di. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you got? Andrew? Okay. So even though, um, even though this girl died at twenty three, she died very young. She was she was absolutely stunning, and uh, I'm going with Simonetta Vespucci. Okay. She was the muse for Venus de Milo and Botticelli's okay. art. She, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yep. I, you know, this girl. Yeah, I would. I would definitely I put that really? up. Really? I would put that up in the. Uh, Oh, in the graphic. she's stunning. I, right? I, I yeah. was going to say Frida Kahlo, the girl with the unibrow. Oh, Because oh, no. yeah. she's like supposedly the hottest chick of all time. And it's like, what? You yeah, know Anthony Davis? This, this chick? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know her. Oh, yeah. well, I recognize her with the full body in yeah. there. I almost like, she was one of the, She was the most beautiful woman in Italy. Her cousin was Amer- Amerigo Vespucci. She was, uh, I mean, first of all, she's Italian. So you know that she loved it. Yeah. All right, two guys. Two. Uh, you know who that is? I see a white screen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> two girls. Two girls. One guy Sorry. that you uh, that you do as honorable mention. Oh, uh, I threw like uh, Queen Nefertiti. We didn't get to. You You've seen her. Yeah. She's no, good that, looking, that's right? the Venus. Yeah. yeah. The Venus, yeah. right? Oh, it's a great pick. I yeah. bet she munches box great. Big oh, time, yeah. Yeah, right? Absolutely. She knows. She knows what she's doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also had uh, Nicole Brown Simpson. Simpson. Oh, wow. Nicole Brown. Farrah she Fawcett. Was good I mean, oh, man, I would have took those. Nicole Brown. I, I'm yeah. I can't believe you didn't take Farrah Fawcett. I don't know. Audrey I, I Hepburn took, is up there. I would have took Nicole Brown Simpson. I would have uh, took her. She was gorgeous. Hedy Lamar. Yeah, nice girl. All right, so I I, I, I rebuke my Sharon Hedy Tate Lamar last week. a good week. one I threw out there, too. Hedy Lamar, I chose her for my dinner table. I rebuke her because she is n- she's no fun. Okay. She mm-hmm. sued Mel Brooks. Oh, yeah. For using her likeness, the name Hedley Lamar instead of Hedy Lamar for Blazing Saddles. Right, yeah. Not Blazing that's Saddles. That's where I'm saying it from. Was it Blazing? Yeah, it was no. Blazing Saddles. Adelaide. She sued them. She sued Mel Brooks and Warner Bros. for $10 million. She has no sense of humor. Fuck I'm her. disappointed. She's out. Green. Anybody have the Matahari? No. no. <laughs> what? Matahari, no? Uh, it's just... <laughs> nope. <laughs> I went for total hotness. I thought James Dean as a she was hot. He was one of my yes. Yeah. Mata Hari was. I'm just saying, like the way you said it. Exotic. It was a dancer who became a fucking spy, who was selling fucking tanks, pictures of French tanks to the Germans. She was putting fucking. Yeah, but a you can't dominate firing her. Firing squad. You can't win over her. They wanted to put a, a, a mask on her. She said no. I don't want a mask. She looked right at the guys about the fire. She blew them a kiss, 
and then they fucking Bad knocked ass. her out. Yeah, Lady Godiva. Nobody. She was on my yeah. list, but I didn't really. She didn't really do like. Catherine the Great fucked a horse. Yeah, no. Catherine the Great, I was gonna put on there, but I don't really. You know had to think about, about what's been there before. I was gonna say Sacagawea. Sacagawea. She was nursing at the time, Pocahontas. so her breasts were. <laughs> oh. yeah. I had Jane Austen on my list too because she was the mother of rom com. I had Bonnie Parker from Bonnie and Clyde. That's not a bad one. Yeah, I I she almost put her down. She wasn't though. Was no she? Nicole Brown. Yeah. No. And I had Grace. Kelly. I had Anna Nicole Smith as my Kelly second. Too. If someone took Grace Kelly yeah. was fucking stunning, yeah. and she was but she was princess. I thought Anna Nicole Smith would be fun. Yeah. What was yeah. the, What was her diet supplement? And she was. Oh, what was she doing? Pumping. Oh, I don't remember. Uh, I don't know. It was. Yeah. That what was, wasn't she pumping? You couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So that's it. So Snake Drift. Jack's got Marilyn Monroe, Helena Troy, Princess Di, Jackie O, and Frank Sinatra. That's beautiful. And then uh, I have Eve, Lady Two. Joan of Arc, Betty Page, and Lord Minimus. That's weird. <laughs> uh, Vib's got uh, Virgin Mary, Cleopatra, Nancy Reagan, Sally Ride, John Wilkes Booth. And then he's got Jesus, Teddy Roosevelt, Ragnar, Herman Rorschach, and Simonetta Vespucci. Mine's the best looking list, that's for sure. What if we combine the dinner table and this one and it's just one orgy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How Love those it. dynamics go. Well, I'll Love tell it. you what. You, you look at my dinner table and then you look at my orgy and I had Andre the Giant. And the, against and, a nine foot Vietnamese girl with three feet long oh, breasts. Oh, what Lord Minimus <sighs> next to Andre? Yeah. That's a yeah, pay per view of that. That's a fucking pay per view. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that sounds like a criminal act. Yeah. All righty. So that's it. That's it for this week of uh, Twisted History of whatever this is. And uh, next week's going to be our last original episode. Uh, thoughts and prayers. Sorry about that, everybody. And then we'll have the, um, the best of following uh, in 4th of July week. Thanks very much to 3 Chief for the sponsorship. We'll see you guys next week. Oh, next week I'm going to try and cover stuff. Like the fact that Hitler raped his... Uh, niece? Niece, yeah. A lot of people have sent some stuff in, so I'm going to try and get to everything. And uh, that is now truly the end. We'll see you next week.